What's up guys, this is Kenska from KenskaArt.com, author and illustrator for Manga for Dummies and Trigger Drawing for Dummies. Today we're going to talk about backgrounds, drawing perspective backgrounds in Clip Studio Paint. Now I gotta be really honest with you, backgrounds aren't my expertise, or what should I say, I don't like drawing them that much. So fortunately for us all, Clip Studio's Paint's perspective ruler makes it so easy to make amazing backgrounds in half the time as if you were drawing with a pencil and a ruler. So we're gonna talk about that, let's get rocking. So starting off, I got this girl standing in the street, she's striking a pose, and I, let's say I wanna draw a, a city background behind her. Now there's a few ways to do it, and one thing I always do recommend first is finding good solid reference. So here I've got a couple of screenshots of similar compositions in a one-point perspective. And I think there's one more. Oh, here we go. Now to access the perspective tool, you'll find it in the menu here for subtool, a ruler, and you're gonna climb down until you see perspective, perspective and hit that. Now the first line you're gonna draw is going to be the bottom line of your composition and the, the second one is going to be the top of your composition. So it's important to first establish the horizon line. Right here. And I'm going to drag the top right around here. And I'm using kind of about where I want the top of the building angle to go. And then I'm gonna click like that. And it'll, what Clip Studio Paint will do is it will automatically get the, the, the vertex from where the line is to be drawn from. You don't have to worry about getting the ruler, <laughs> attaching additional pages to the, to, the, uh, to the composition in order to find that vanishing point. Nope, Clip Studio Paint does it all for you right there. And what's really, really cool about Clip Studio Paint is if I go ahead and click that object selection tool, I can, go ahead and move it around. So let's say if I, if I, if I drew the line first, it's like, oh, you know what? I gotta make, I gotta make some changes. No worries. Clip Studio's pink, gotcha. And I can go here and I can adjust this line to go a little bit down. This is, this is gonna, this is going to uh, control where the bottom of the buildings are. All right. Now, how and where to determine where the vanishing point is. That's a good question. Uh, it depends on what kind of narration you want. What are you trying to say through the composition? So for example, in here, since her head is right smack in the middle where all the perspective lines are meeting, it's a higher, the camera you can tell is a little bit higher than the rest of her body, as opposed to this shot, complete opposite. Look how high her head is. It's almost to the ceiling of, of, the, of the buildings. And you can kind of tell where all of the vertices is leading right to her waistline. So that's where the camera angle is. So you get a very different narrative and it's up to you to choose which one you want to go with. I am going to go ahead with, just for kicks and giggles, I'm going to, kick with, I'm going to stick with the, the, um, the lower angle. And actually, I'm going to drag it up just a little bit now that I think about it. All right. Actually, I'm gonna drag it all the way off the paper right here. All right, so once you commit to this guideline uh, and start drawing, yes, you can change and manipulate this uh, perspective line, but you cannot change the drawing. The drawing stays there. <laughs> if it did, <laughs> uh, wow, that'd be too good. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and you can see immediately the lines are automatically drawn and I don't have to worry about measuring. I don't have to worry about reassessing where it was drawn in the first place. Completely block out those shapes. Now the rule of thumb is for lines, the distance between the lines, the further away it gets from you, the narrower the distance between these two lines does need to get. So I'm going, I'm going to look at this perspective here and you can kind of see sure enough, the, the windows here, the width gets narrower and narrower and narrower. 
Now, if you can see the front of the buildings, they fall in line. Look at the side of the buildings. Look, they go straight in the, they follow a horizontal perspective. Now this is typical in a one point perspective, which is what I have here. So let's say for example, I wanna draw some gap between that building. I can go ahead and Clip Studio Paints guideline would automatically compensate for that. And I'm gonna draw on, just make marks, come back to my reference. I love all the little architectures and the rims that are there. Oops. Now the tricky thing is sometimes, depending on the size of your screen, the pen will snag on to a different, like you, like how you see right here, it snags onto a different um, uh, guide. I haven't found a way to really uh, select which guide to which guide which guide it, it sticks to. It kind of has its, its um, mind of its own. But that's what the undo button is for. Here, maybe I want to create a different. And we, especially when you're drawing, you know, I, I know, like I said before, we all want to draw like Katsuhiro Otomo and have those really detailed drawings and of, of every single facade of the building illustrated. But chances are you're not gonna find that opportunity when you're dealing with a very tight deadline, um, especially in storyboarding and advertising. And in fact, in fact, in fact, in fact, too much information can actually turn um, away the clients because the clients get, um, usually when the clients see these boards, they uh, they do get intimidated. It's like, wow, we have to find the exact kind of characters with the exact kind of facade of the buildings. I don't know, we can't, we might not be able to do that. Um, it's not quite the most imaginative approach in how they decide what they want, but there, there it is, that's the fact. So it's, sometimes it's better to go a little bit more general so that they don't feel like they're cornered into choosing what kind of story they're going to base off, base their uh, actual photo shoot on. I hope that makes sense. Uh, that's actually one of the concepts that many, uh, uh, which I had to learn as a new store when I first started storyboarding is you can't get too specific with detail. Sometimes general, loose is, is better. Now, if you're designing for film or, or video game, that's a different story. Then you probably need to hunker down Study the render it, the architecture a little bit more, and make sure you get all those details and facts a little bit more specific. But for the tense of story, it, all intents and purposes of doing storyboards, especially for uh, especially for advertising, the rules are a little bit more flexible, which is why I, I kind of enjoy working on storyboards more. As you see, as I move over to this side, which goes on a different plane. Oops. Uh, it, it accommodates that. I can draw a side window here. Let's see what other ideas can I get from this reference? Oh, uh, okay. There's like a little subroom on top of the building. Maybe I want to include that. Now I, I feel like, like I want to add a, some kind of like a water tower 
now we're, as you can see everything's constricted on a on a, uh, a line base all I have to do is go here click here and you see that check on 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 the right side where it says show um, show only in one edit if I scroll down click on it disappears and now I'm free to go ahead and add different objects I mean, different lines if I want to Freehanding this right now. I don't have perspective ruler turned on just for demonstration purposes. And when I want to zoom back to my grid, I, I click on this one, and instantly you see the blue guidelines reappear, which means that I'm back in business. And go ahead and start drawing again. Now, it's not just only the pen tool that's adhering to these strict guidelines, it's also the eraser as well. Now, this is looking good, but that being said, you're going to notice that it's a little bit, it looks a little bit flat, and you are correct in thinking that, because what's happening is, we rarely see just one point perspective, just from a physical standpoint. We always have, we have two eyes, and if you cover your left and you cover your right, we see different vantage points. So. It's a good start, but you, if you can, want to add another perspective. And how we do that is, I go ahead and click on my ruler again. And now you can do it either way or, or. I could stick to the same layer. I recommend stick, uh, selecting another layer just because there's just so many guides that appear. But let's take, for example, this, this part here, this top part right here. It's the higher it gets, it should angle down more. If I go ahead and angle the top a little bit here and let go and I angle the, the bottom let's see where my bottom angle is you know I want to keep it close to that I created a two-point perspective which allows me to then go back and create another dimension space so like for example I'm creating a taller building here off in the background it gives me a more depth of feel I have no reference here I'm just dueling based on shapes and trust me, I know that this perspective tool will be a little bit frustrating because it's got little quirks. But trust me, once you start playing around with it, it is so addicting. I mean, you just keep on wanting to draw lines and boxes and shapes on top of everything. And that's how you learn how to draw buildings and sceneries and background. It's not by necessarily copying, uh, sticking to what's a reference. I mean, it would be completely boring. I mean, imagine if your illustrations look exactly like that. Exactly like this. Sure, I mean it has its purposes, but you know where's the fun of that? You got you got to take risks, and this perspective tool makes it so enticing to do so. I really recommend anybody who um, is is starting out to Eclipse Studio Paint to take advantage of this. And like I said before, the R rules. There are small rules, like for example, the, the taller it gets, uh, uh, the narrower it should be, or the, the width of the, the windows gets smaller. But we don't want to become we don't want to become too entangled with it to the point that we're just not having fun and being creative. 
Now, it, this, it doesn't just apply to buildings. It also applies to rooms, interior rooms. And so let's take this, I'm gonna pause for a second. Let me save that, make sure we don't lose that. And I'm gonna switch over to something different here. So the Perspective Tool in Clip Studio Paint works wonders, not only just in buildings, but also in interior rooms as well. And so here I have a illustration I did for a very famous pizza company. Uh, that I did for a couple of years ago, and if I go ahead, I'm going to click the the uh, the ruler perspective, and let's say if I wanted to draw the background walls, I'm going to here. I think it's right around there, the top of the ceiling, and the bottom is somewhere around right here. Okay. And I also want to draw the other side. So I'll create a two-point perspective going this way and somewhere around like there. Now I'm going to show you something cool. If I zoom out, you can actually see where the vanishing points are that starts all the way from there and all the way from there. Can you imagine having to find a paper that zooms all the way out there big enough to finally get that? And also a ruler that's, that's long enough. All right. So go ahead and click my pen tool, and I want to start knocking in, let's say, um, and actually, you know what, now I'm thinking about it. I'm going to raise that perspective to just a tad smidge. Now, if you, of course, if you don't want to go out there and raise it, all you can do is click here on the, on the uh, oops, sorry, on the perspective tool, and you can manually raise it over there. Clip Studio Paint will go ahead and make those calculations for you. It's so cool. Same thing here. Uh, now you gotta make sure this is the drag button, which changes the position, and this here, if you click on here, that's the angle which the vertex, the vanishing point is gonna be. Uh, located. Same thing on here. Uh, I'm going to click on that one here. Where is it? Where are you? Huh. So sometimes it's kind of hard to locate where. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. My rule of thumb is when in doubt, always check the top of it so where you see the walls uh, starting. Enough of that, let's make the magic happen here. So I want to draw the trim. And... Doorway. The light switch. And some paintings. Look how easy it gets. Zoom in and I can create, without having to use a straight rolling tool, all I need is once those, those guidelines are set down, I can go ahead and create all the extraneous details without having to worry about a ruler. And for this side of the room, I'm gonna the trim. So you still need to do your research in terms of where, what does a trim look like. You know, go to a reference, go to a magazine or Pinterest, uh, find out what a window looks like because windows that they create right now are very, very different from the windows, let's say, for example, back in the 80s or, or 70s, the styles have changed. But that's minor. I mean, all you need to really do is, I mean, windows a window. It's just a just a kind of, uh, do you like squares or do you like uh, <laughs> um, rectangles? <laughs> Oops, and again, I'm keeping it very general. I don't want to be too specific for the test of purpose of storyboarding. Maybe there's a painting, a painting right here. It gives a, it gives a lot more dimension 
having that extra background in here. Um, something that's giving t uh, just enough more information, not too much information. And if you want to give it a little bit more emphasis on the figures in, in the front, here's a cute trick that uh, some of my colleagues uh, show me how to do. Um, now, unfortunately, the, it's a little cropped off from the top, so you're going to have to uh, trust me on this. So you go to filter, go to distort, I'm uh, sorry, uh, haha, blur, Gaussian blur. And I want to bump the, the blur up just a little bit so it fades a little bit. Click OK. And I'm going to decrease the opacity of that layer. So the emphasis is on the kids, the pizza box, the pizza, and not so much on the background. The thing I wanted to cover is how using the, the uh, perspective tool can help you uh, create really cool narratives and composition wise. We're going to be using a three point perspective. I wanted to create a character who was meditating on bed, but kind of give it a sense of that she was in a higher uh, mind state, <laughs> if you will. Using my perspective tool again, create another layer. And just roughly guesstimate where I think I might have the top part of the sketches, bottom part. And so I, we created two perspective vertices. Now we're going to create a third one. And again, I'm going to use the side of that bed right here as a guide. And let's go ahead and let's see where should I use as another side. I'm going to say I'm going to use that wall right there. Okay, now let's see what we get. So my pencil tool. And go ahead and start making those edges and you immediately you'll see the snap it snaps right to um, the edges of my bed that's the ba back baseboard of the bed uh, let's get the cushion the mattress Now, as you see here, not all of my perspective rulers are going to fall closely to what I want or I haven't planned, uh, but that's okay. Uh, if it really bothers you, tweak it a little bit. But for now, I'm going to leave it because it doesn't bother me so much. I want to keep on going. Okay, now I'm getting carried away, so I got to make a stop to this. It's just so fun to use. This board right here, side of the wall. That one goes like that. And the trim. Now there's a saying that the rough your rough sketches have so much energy, and after that. It's hard to carry on the exact same energy to the final title drawings. Uh, I think that's true. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way, but uh, most of the time I find that that's usually the case. So I'm going to release the guides for just a second so I can go ahead and start freehand. But look at how much time I saved. I, this, this thing just basically crank out these, these background illustrations. Hey, these aren't finished by any 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 means. Um, they're just basic guidelines from which you can start off drawing more tighter, uh, tighter line quality. But it's a good basis to start off with. And from here, I'm going to use this guideline for now. I might, I might decide to layer, switch it around if I wanted to. I'm going to basically try to knock, it, knock her out really quickly. And 
imagine this part is going to be hidden by the bed. Okay, stop right now. Back her down. Increase the size a little bit. Okay. And as I expected, this is going to be hidden. background. Make some guidelines. That perspective gives her a sense of, you know, she's she's calm and she's in charge. So as I go on and start refining the drawing a little bit, I can go ahead and erase the harsh edges that I, of those lines I initially drew. And replace it with something a little bit more organic. You can always go back, click on that guideline. Keep adding more detail, or keep adding more information if I want to. I can go back to this figure, you know, I just cranked her out within just, what, a couple of minutes. Uh, I can go ahead and, and refine her a little bit if I wanted to. Oh, guys, and this is a perfect time to, to do something totally cool and new that just came out in a recent release of Clips Studio Paint. It's called a time lapse. Yes. Uh, and I don't know why. It, before, it was only available to Procreate. And I was like, why, why, why couldn't you release it for Clips Studio Paint, you guys? Um, and here you go, it's under file, time lapse, and you can record and it will start recording your fast speed progress. It is amazing. If you want, if all the YouTubers or Instagrammers who want to use that to show how you finally like something that's loosened to something that's a lot more tighter, def, def, def recommend it. Uh, so anyway, here we go. So there you have it. Uh, three ways on how you use the perspective tool to create uh, narratives in your composition. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you have any questions, please leave your comments and questions in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to smash that notification button to on. And until then, in Christ's peace, bye. Clip Studios, I can't say it. Clip Studio Paints.